Hello everyone, welcome to Vahography Talk number 14. And today we have a master wedding and portrait photographer extraordinaire, Mr. Yervant here from Australia. Yervant, it's a it's a pleasure to have you. Co-host Ryan Troy, you guys know Ryan. How's it going? Yervant. Thank you for joining our talk. This Hi is guys, gonna be how are you? Great, great. This is going to be a lot of fun for me because I've been I'm in the industry, so <laughs> so this I'm I'm a big fan. So <laughs> excuse my nerves because I've been you know look what you know following you for some time now. Well, again, I even... I'm just a wedding photographer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. You're a master wedding photographer and, you know, a big time influence on a lot of people around the world. And by the way, I've seen I've sat in your master class a few years back at WPPI. And yeah, it was yeah. great learning experience. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us. No problem. Yeah. So we want to ask you some questions about wedding photography and all that good stuff um, and, you know, get the party started. But I wanted to ask you first, um, talk to us about how you got your start on photography, when it was, why it was, all that good stuff. Well, uh, my father was a photographer back home in Africa. I was born in Africa, Ethiopia. My background is Armenian. Uh, my father was a photographer there. So that was my passion. I learned a lot from him and from his friend photographers back in Africa. Then I, I came to Australia with my family. I studied here more photography and art in, in Italy also. I learned uh, art in Italy and then uh, wow. that's how I started. It was uh, all, always it was going to be photography. And that's how I got my start too. My father was a photographer from Armenia and I uh, came to the States as a little kid. I had photography in my household for, for years. So Yervan, I've noticed that you incorporate a lot of motion in your images. Movement instead of that static posing element that you see in a lot of wedding photography. How did that come about? My, my initial start was like everyone else. I started with heavy cameras, like medium format cameras, like House of Bloods, Roller Flexes. I started with that, so I, I used tripod and go to the park, take pictures of the people. Of course, because it was film, you had 15, 12 frames in a, on, on a roll, and then uh, we went, uh, we used about 10 rolls, and uh, we were limited, so one look at the camera, one looking away, and that was it. So it became quite boring for me uh, in the 1990s. It became uh, every week was the same. We used to line up in front of the fountain and next photographer, next photographer, take eye shots and go to the reception. So that became boring. And because I was working also in the dark room, uh, I was quite poisoned by the chemicals I was using because I didn't have good ventilation aircon. Uh, so I decided, well, either I'm going to leave this business or find a, a, a new way of shooting and processing. At that time, uh, I realized that digital was happening. It was a fantasy, but it was also a reality. So I really made the research and uh, found the correct equipment, found the correct software. Uh, initially, it was scanning because Kodak used to use scanning of negatives. Then uh, I started uh, photoshopping and then eventually digital camera. And when I started to use digital, I started to use 35 millimeter. And that made me more flexible. So I, for, I offered my client, instead of boring parks, why don't we go in the city, downtown area or anywhere where it's exciting and let's do fun shots instead of just stay in one place. And uh, so that, that really, started to bring me more into photography because now I was excited. So I was moving, working with the client and taking a lot of pictures. 
and finding the light, discovering locations. You know, I got the same location maybe 100 times, 200 times, 300 times, but I always find something new that excites me. And also I discovered that the background was not my subject. It was the, the, the couple was my subject because initially we, were, we used to go beautiful places, bring the subject in and take the picture. So the background was always the same with a new subject. Yeah. In. That, didn't, that didn't work, it was boring. Whereas now my subject is the, the couple and uh, the background is me too. It can be yeah. anywhere, whatever. Even if I go the same location million times, I still find something new in the background because my couple is my subject. Oh, that's awesome. You started with uh, film. And then after that, when you moved to digital, you said that um, you was doing Photoshop. Now, I went through your photos and like the editing process is, is very, very good. I just wanted to know, was it any type of learning curve between going from the dark room into Photoshop and how, how hard or how easy was that transition with you? Uh, it was not easy because when I bought my first Photoshop, it was a demo version. It was not even owned by Adobe. It was all this uh, different company. I paid nearly $6,000 for a demo, oh. demo kit those days oh, and wow. and the, the 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 importer said we're not going to import it because it's too expensive so there was nothing available for me to learn so i i i took darkroom techniques and started to utilize my photoshop with the darkroom techniques even the retouching with, with the brush so i basically teach myself how to do it how, how many years you've been shooting weddings how many years have you been a photo wedding photographer? 35 years. Wow. Wow. Has Long it gone? Uh, what, what can you tell us about those times versus the modern times? Has it gotten easier, harder? Uh, it's it's, uh, it's uh, before selling was much easier. Selling to the client was much easier because they didn't have iPhones. So mm -hmm. uh, people wanted to buy pictures, which was very good because they they gave value to our product uh, then it started when it, if iPhones and the, uh, mobile phones came it it really nearly finished that that part of the business so we needed to reinvent ourselves that part of the business there to sell reprints and uh, pictures so, so it's it's equal equal some good before some bad before and the same now you know there's good and bad oh the secret is you need to reinvent yourself uh you don't sit down and say oh my god it's the end of the world it <laughs> does, if, right. if, if you say that it is the end of the world <laughs> yeah so yeah because uh ryan he's a, a studio and portrait photographer and yep. he's thinking he's thinking about shooting weddings and i've answered some questions and I've, i was like you know what Come on this talk. I have master wedding photographer Yervon coming in and, you know, he has probably has questions for you. But before we continue with the questions, I have to comment on what we're seeing back there. I mean, I see a, a, amazing things back behind you. Uh, this, <laughs> those... is, this is my my hobby. You know, uh, many years ago, people used to say, don't you have a hobby? I said, what, what hobby? My business, my work is a hobby. I love what I do. Why do I need another hobby? So oh, wow. because they were saying, oh, you need a hobby or something. I said, okay, hobby, hobby. I started, I, I bought a film camera and then I started collecting cameras. That's my hobby. So wow. I have over 600 film cameras. Wow. That's Are you insane. serious? Yes, yes. Six. I collect it from all over the world. And I still wow. collect. Uh, now I'm starting to collect all digital cameras, you know, but most of them are nearly new. Or some mm. of them are new. So it's, it's a very good collection. Well, what we're is gonna your get... favorite? My favorite, well, let me see, it's, it's right behind me. Oh, is that the Rolly? The Rolly. I've always been a fan of this camera. And... The exciting part of it is uh, it's a serial number is zero, zero, zero. Mm. Wow. 
So it's a, it's a limited edition. It's quite a beautiful camera. That's beautiful. Uh, so, yeah. It looks yeah. brand new. It looks like it it's barely new. been used. It, it, I, I haven't even touched it. It oh, is wow. brand new. It's brand new. I bought this wow. from USA. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, it's, it's you, when when I, my my son loves those cameras too. So when we, we play with them and some of them we don't touch, some we do. So we still use film for for teaching my son how to photograph because he's quite interested in the business. So what's your favorite film stock? Uh, now it's it's hard to, I used to love Fuji. Well, the last films I used to use was Fuji because they were they were quite good. Kodak, of course, uh, Kodak, just the the standard four hundred ISO uh, pro professional portraiture. Uh, yeah, portraiture. Now they're For raising the prices. Pardon? They're raising the price on. They the... have raised it quite a lot. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Well, well, well it's we're gonna. gonna be, it's a luxury now. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's like wow. We're going to get into the modern cameras that you use a little bit later because I'm very okay. curious on that. No problem. <laughs> when you showed me that Rolleiflex, it reminded me of Vivian Mayer. You heard yes. of Vivian Mayer's story? Yes, yes, yes. I, when I watched that documentary, I couldn't believe my uh, what I was looking at. It was just a credible story. But yeah, well, I used to use a Mamiya C220 for weddings. <laughs> Not as elaborate than the, the uh, your role is your cameras there. I see you. Do you own any Leicas? I have Leicas, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. You can't have a collection without Leicas, yeah. I have, oh, have Leicas, yeah. It's uh, you see, this role, for example, it's a classic, you know. This, this all the Rolleiflex is gone many years, but this camera has, has been uh, my father's used to use this camera like a photojournalistic uh, you know so i've i've always played with it and it's it's one of my favorites camera i did not know that about you that you're a collector um wow that's i haven't too. talked too much about it but there's gonna be a, i have a youtube channel yervan tech i i like to shoot light i like my camera and the lens that's all i want to carry the best thing about investing in top branded lenses is that they last for a lifetime and soon i'm gonna review each one of them and play with them so there's gonna be i'm planning a lot the only problem is i don't have enough time i'm so busy with my photography business so yeah. <laughs> uh, i have to give that priority especially now after the COVID. you know yeah right um i have a quick question so Looking at all of these cameras that you have right now, actually, it, it brings something to me. So when I when I'm going through your work, I, I look at I'm a I like grain and photos. And when I look at your work, it's starting to make sense to me now is you like that film look in your work, don't you? 100%. Do you add grain or do On you purpose. just shoot hot? Yes, I've seen it. And it makes so yes. much sense to me now. Yeah. On purpose, I see all uh, and I sell it to my clients. I sell it to my clients. I have big prints with a lot of grain and say, look, isn't that grain beautiful? And it the is. clients beautiful. remind me, don't forget the grain. Yes. Because it makes it more arty, more feeling, you mm -hmm. know, more too soft is too much. Yes. Yeah. But, but I've beautiful. gone through all the stages. I've gone through all the stages. You know, I've tried everything and I still try. I still try to improve it. I still change stuff. So it's very important. Yeah. Back to your wedding photography, uh, I noticed that you incorporate a lot of the bridal party in your photographs, but not just a standard bridal party shot. Your bridal party shots are one of the most incredible images I've ever seen in wedding photography. The action, you involve a lot of the other people in the bridal party, your locations. It's just like, it's outstanding what you do. How do you control a rowdy bridal party, you know, some of them, they just want to party, they want to drink and party, but how do you control? Think, how do you... you said it, you said it, drink, <laughs> drink, you said it. Uh, okay, the, you know, many years ago, we had half an hour to photograph everything. And uh, it was really, we, we were playing with time, we couldn't go anywhere. 
And, and in Australia, we, we managed to, not only me, every photographer, we managed to train our clients or educate our clients that give us more time and we'll give you magic. We, we said that. Now we get morning start, sometimes even seven o'clock, and we have about three, four hours of bracket in between uh, service and reception. So that's the party time. We call it the party time. That's when we become creative. Uh, after church, we go to a bar for half an hour and drink. Everyone drinks. Wow. Uh, most of the time, I, 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 I buy the drinks, oh. you know, <laughs> because potentially all the bridal party and everyone are clients, future clients. Uh, so if I look after them, they're going to come back to me because they had fun with me. It's not the boring photo yeah. session in the park so we go there and say oh we're great bar oh great man let's do it go to the bar i start photographing there already when they're drinking you know i do individual shots of the bridal party and send them gifts as uh, thank you card pictures I, I i i create a lot of excitement then we drink i say okay guys i'm going to take the bride and groom away for a few minutes have that private moment with the bride and groom do the romantic shots then go back, pick up the bridal groom, uh, bridal party, and move, walk around the block, go for a walk, and see what we can discover in, as a background. I've never heard of that before, where you photographer would actually pick up the tab. I bet you that leaves a lasting impression on everybody. They're like, wow, thank you very much. That's awesome. That's amazing. You see, I used to spend nearly thirty, forty thousand dollar in magazine advertising, bridal magazine advertising a year about uh, ten years ago. Wow! And 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 it was a lot of money. And now I spend much less, and I have the client right in my hand. If if I look after them, I look after if they're called, give my jacket. You know, we have, we have even a, a a small kit if there's any problem with the. Uh, uh, accessories of the bridal party the dresses and things we we can fix it so we we fully look after them and we became become friends with them you know we sit mm -hmm. down drink with them we have a drink cheers guys here and buying them the drink it makes it makes it different feeling because now they owe you and directly <laughs> indirectly but they enjoy the session also you see they're having good time with you so we're all because I need my espresso coffee. It doesn't matter when. So that my that's my time to have my espresso and enjoy the bridal party, having good time. Once I mm. put them in the mood and start shooting, they're gonna cooperate hundred percent. Wow, that's crazy. They're gonna and, cooperate, and, and, and it loosens them up too, right? It, have a it loosens them up because they had their food, their drink. You know, we buy little uh, uh, something to eat. I said, the party has started now, guys. Let's eat, let's drink, let's celebrate. So what you're going to do at the reception? Let's do it now on the street. We make noise, <laughs> we make... Uh, we make and I've had weddings. They were so exciting that I, like a bus up, gathered people around us watching watching what we're doing. So, so bring excitement to the whole thing. You're really good with veils, bride's veils. You know, yes. the way you incorporate them. It's just masterful. I've done that part of my uh, my important shots. Uh, so I don't wait for the wind. I just create movement with the brides waving the veil and the bride playing with it. So I create moment. I say, sweetheart, just play with it. Expression, giggle. I know it looks stupid, but I'm going to get amazing pictures. So I make like a like a moment with the bride middle party and they go for it and I capture the moment. Of course, I look for the perfect light, capture it like that. Nice, nice. Yeah, you have a uh, you break all the rules. Mr. I Ryan. have I know all the, <laughs> the traditional and I break the rules. I know the tradition <laughs> and I say who made the tradition? Another photographer. Yeah. So yeah, right? I I I, I keep the tradition in mind but i break the rule 100 yeah. percent. yeah your brides are your brides are beautiful they're elegant the, you see what what has happened 
Melbourne has some of the best photographers for wedding photography. So it, it was very tough earlier, earlier in the time it was tough. I had to compete, I had to compete. But now I've reached, you know, I've reached the point that I am, I, I am a brand. The bride mm. comes to me because I'm a brand. Of course. And I, I really attract the correct brides because I promote what I want to, to sell. And who likes my style will come to me. I don't do what everyone else does because I don't want them to come for something I don't do. I show glamour. So the bride who, who likes to show off, that's what I, I attract. 80% or 90% of the time, I get always the correct bride. Yeah. Because of the branding and uh, make sure that it's it's the the correct promotions we do. So I wanted to know how since you've been a photographer, has your style changed? Have you ever fought with, you know, changing your style or anything like that? Yes, yes, definitely. I've I've been always aggressive, especially when I used to enter awards. I wanted to be different to 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 challenge my competition because there, uh, my first workshop I did, there were 100 photographers in the room. It was at Kodak headquarters. They had a big place here. They used to manufacture here in Melbourne. So I was invited by Kodak to, to do a presentation. And I had 100 of my biggest competition. And that was the first year I started digital. And, and presenting my photography and what I do with Photoshop, was all crazy. There were all this competition. I was asking them to ask me question, but no one dared to ask me question because they didn't have a clue what am I talking about. This what <laughs> Photoshop, what's this, what that. So it was scary a little bit because there was no reaction. And I asked the Kodak guy, what's going on? Why they're not asking me questions? He said, don't worry, Yervan, they don't know what you're talking about. That's why. Uh, and then I claimed that, they, that in five years, or maximum 10 years, film is gonna go and it's gonna be digital. And Kodak pulled me back, they pulled my ear back and said, yeah, why don't you can't say that film is to stay here. It's never gonna go away. <laughs> right. And uh, that was the case. But so it was very important for me always to be different. Then when I became digital, I did all the crazy things you can do with digital, you know, gimmicky stuff. Then I said, no, I can't do all this, 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 stuff because it's going to get out of fashion but i moved to a new area to the to the higher area in in melbourne a high high higher value area and the photographer said you're crazy everyone who's gone there hasn't made it it's it's tough the it's expensive rent you know the rent i was paying was more expensive than my house then so so it was it was scary but I took the risk. I took the risk. And we, we booked so many weddings the first year. It was, it was not a joke. I, I did book more than what I was capable of. And we couldn't catch up with them. We were six months, seven months late with our productions. But it was a start. We, we were revolutionizing the industry. Uh, after that, every every year I, I try to make different the, the style I should, the way I should, just the small differences, small differences. But let let me say, every time I go to a shoot, there must I must have at least ten hero pictures, something that I haven't done. If I don't achieve that, mm -hmm. I don't leave the wedding until I achieve that ten amazing pictures, different the pictures, and and it's very easy to find that when you have the different clients you know i'm not looking at the background anymore i'm looking at the client each client has their something different so that's that's how i work I imagine i have a white background and i have mm -hmm. people in front of it that's 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 how i work 10 pictures to overdo your from the last shoot huh that's <laughs> from the last shoot yeah always <laughs> i shoot quite a lot not because i'm not confident uh you see many years ago when i was shooting with hasselblad or, or Rolly, I used both. Uh, some of the expressions were terrible, beautiful. Everything is beautiful, lighting, everything. But expression is not there because I was worried how many shots I'm going to take of each. Yeah. Each thing. 
So uh, now I've I've decided no. Now I have the camera. I will go. I don't go like a machine gun, but I will <laughs> go click and click and another click and maybe talk to them another click. I want the expression to change. So each each shot maybe I'll take up to ten, up five to ten pictures. So I have a great expression out of the ten. I will only show the bride and groom one. So I'll, I'll be hard, even if it's 10 great shots, I will show them only one because yeah. I want I want them to have the best out of the collection. Yeah. How do you deal with clients that are not really like nervous or you can't get an expression out of them, uh, their bad attitude or, or, you know, they're not into it? How do you break the ice? Yeah, every now and then you're going to get the the bride and groom who not one of them is not going to cooperate 100 percent mm -hmm. but because i've created the branding and people are excited to have me as their yeah. photographer they cooperate but but saying that what i learned also uh, you know in the old days with the with the rolling you never put your face in there you look down and up look down and up you communicated with the client but what I, I, I happened with when I started using 35 millimeter, looking through the viewfinder and I was not communicating anymore. I was in a separate, separate world. When digital mirrorless happened, mirrorless cameras, I 100% moved away from the viewfinder. Mm. I don't look in the viewfinder anymore. Mm -hmm. I look at the screen. Uh, yeah. I look at the screen, hold the camera away from me so I'm 100% communicating with them. I say stupid things sometimes and they laugh and that's what I want. Can you give us I, one? I, 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 want, I want to make jokes. I want to make uh, comments and uh, when they laugh, when they, they move or when, uh, or I say, come on, sweetheart, look gorgeous, look sexy, look glamorous. Suddenly, don't say, oh, come on, sweetheart, look sexy. That will say, <laughs> you know, compliments, compliments, always compliments, how beautiful you are. Uh, you too, uh, to the groom, you know, you too, you're sexy too, don't worry. You know, it's, it's all comments. Uh, uh, make them let go. So I start with the bride when the groom is there. So I make him feel that he's been left out for a few minutes. Yeah. And, and then I bring him in and then when the groom cooperates and after having the drinks and having full stomach, they are going to have fun. It's, I yeah. say this is the party. Most probably we don't have to go to the reception. We're doing it so well here. Yeah. So I bring a lot of excitement, a lot of uh, we walk, we don't stop. We walk, we walk, we stop, take the picture. Another, I, I always walk at the front to see how, if there's something new. and. Uh, continuously shoot yeah i definitely know when i see a yervan uh portrait i know it's your work you have a lot of guys uh in la market that are you know sh emulating your style here i'm sure it's you an know. honor it's an honor <laughs> yeah it's, it's an honor uh because know. uh we we are all the photography industry we're all all brothers we love the same thing so we are all one so uh, we have to share and learn from each other to make us still learn from uh, other things, you know, even if it's not photography, I watch uh, video movies, I watch uh, TV shows, I, I, I read books, I watch magazines. So I always get inspired. Yeah. Well, you've inspired me for years, Mr. Yervan, I'll tell you right Thank now. You. Let's talk about gear. Uh, you mentioned mirrorless. So what's your go-to wedding camera right now, Canon? Okay, funny enough, uh, I, I'm a Canon master in mm -hmm. Australia. And uh, about five years ago, uh, I was invited by Canon uh, to, no, actually they came to my studio uh, because I have downtown studio. My studio is in downtown. Canon brought two Japanese gentlemen and uh, they said these guys are the designers of the EOS uh, cameras that that run the shape of the EOS cameras 
So they were the actual designer from the, if you know the Canon T90, the original Canon T90, which I have it here, they started to design it and they were very excited to see me. So we went to a beautiful dinner and I said, guys, I know I shouldn't say this, but I, I buy cameras. I collect cameras, every brand. And I have a camera that I really like. It's called Sony A7, the mm -hmm. first one. I bought it when it came out first because I always believed something like Leica, mirrorless, because digital didn't need the, the reflex mirror uh, because that was the only way we could see the picture. But with mirrorless, we didn't need it. So I suggested to them, they loved. They said, uh, I know what, what are you talking about, but at the moment we are not planning anything, but maybe in the future. So that's mm. how it was. But uh, I love my Canon. I always use Canon. I use the Canon, uh, the EOS 1DX and all those cameras. But I, I, I also played with many mirrorless cameras like the Olympus, the Sony, which I have them all. And uh, I just loved how these cameras are functioning, how it will change the way I look at the camera, you know, back to the Leica days. So I started uh, sideways, I started to play with these cameras at weddings also, and things. Your go-to for weddings is? Originally, the, the R came, the Canon R came, uh, which I in, in immediately converted to that. I got rid of all my uh, DSLRs and started with the R. Uh, then, of course, the, the R6 and R5 came, and uh, I moved to those ones. Ah, uh, Ryan played. Ryan, you played with the R5 recently, right? Yep, I played with the R5. I played with the R5. So, which which is your favorite for wedding? Is it the R5, R5 or the R6? R6. And is it because of the megapixels? You don't want those big I don't, files? Yeah, yeah. megapixels. Uh, sensitivity for light you know the iso true uh the r6 is nearly the same camera yes r5 has the advantages i'm not saying i have the r5 i love shooting manual because i control the lighting how's the lens clean i'm not saying r5 is not good but for my style of photography for the Correct. speed and everything r6 is much better the file size are quite decent you know, I used to use uh, early digital cameras and they were five megapixels. Right, and I right. produce weddings out of that. So we, we, we get too much worried about these things. You know, film, film if you enlarge it uh, more than uh, 20 by 24, it was grainy and bad, you know? Uh, right. so, so the new generation photographers are too concerned about those, uh, those problems. We are, we are so much, oh, how big is the file? It's big enough you know it's right big enough uh, what is yeah. your favorite lens when it comes to shooting weddings what's your Good number question. one favorite 24 70 l okay uh originally i used to use the 2.8 but it was a little bit too heavy for me for weddings i want i want the lightness i carry only a camera on me nothing else just the camera right. my eye assistant will have a, a backup backup camera but I want to be free. I don't want to be worried about equipment and everything. My assistant will have, hold, hold also light, light if we need light. Uh, and uh, so the 2470 will cover everything. Then because I shoot beautiful backgrounds, you know, I shoot city. Uh, I go to all bu buildings, all locations. My background is also very much part of the shoot. So. I shoot usually f4 or 5.64 groups. I was happy to go for the f4. Now I, I am totally converted to the f4, uh, 2470. Oh, wow. Excellent lens, beautiful. And uh, if I need to, because the ISO on the camera, I, I have set up my camera from 100 ISO to 12,000 ISO. I, I've locked into that bracket because I don't want to go accidentally yeah. over. Yeah. I have no problem. Up to 12,000, it's brilliant. It's beautiful light, uh, beautiful. There's hardly much noise. Like I said, I add, I will clean the noise and add after. Uh, so 
so that's an excellent excellent camera and yes i have compared it i have the new s7 IV. yes i have that and i've compared it because i don't want to be left behind if i'm not using the correct equipment equipment doesn't make my pictures but yeah. i find it the canon has that beautiful uh, softness that beautiful crisp that uh, other cameras can't produce and and also these rf lenses are magic any rf lens you know i've been using the 85 rf f2 that's not an l lens that's amazing lens for portraits uh, so 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 canon has done the right thing to redevelop the lenses everyone's saying not enough lenses how many lenses are we going to buy <laughs> you know and and at the end of the day lenses are being produced you know uh, other brands also sigma or other companies are going to come with those lenses okay. they can't avoid canon you know yeah i love the fact that you're uh you know you don't just limit yourself to, to gear you want to see okay sony's check out sony check out hey by the way we're both nikon guys uh do you own any nikon uh, gear yes i do i do i do you yes, know I the, the i bought a brand new nikon the the, the f fx was it the fx the 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 dslr the, the, which is, looked uh, uh which looked the traditional camera it's somewhere here the df 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 that's it yeah i bought a, a limited edition of that i haven't played with the new one z uh, z9 what is that right z9 the this new is Z9? the uh no this is the nikon fm do you have one of these? Yes, I do. I do. I do. I have, a, I have so many good Nikon collections. Okay. I have so many good ones. Let me show you yeah, one. Is... Hold on. Let me show you one. Wow. I can't wait to see this. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I love this camera. Let yeah. me show you one. I'm, I'm not going. I'm here, guys. <laughs> Look at all those cameras stuff. back there. Man. Look at those gold-plated ones up there. That's I know, cool. right? What is that? <laughs> bling, oh, bling. No, I'm, I'm looking for it. It's somewhere here. Yeah. Yeah, everyone. By the way, I love the way your studio looks. I've seen pictures. He said he has 600 cameras yeah. or, or <laughs> over 600 cameras. I, so. thought my, I thought my collection was good. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Oh, no. it's, I have a Leica, Leica lookalike. Uh, Nikon oh, limited edition. This is the one I was talking about. The DF. Yeah. Yeah, DF. Nice. But I have some really nice Nikons. Uh, limited. My son is playing with them, so he must have placed it somewhere else. So yeah. yes, yes. Of course. How 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 old is your son? Uh, I have two sons. One is twenty six. He he shoots. He's very good at it. But he's also uh, he works as a uh uh what is it uh he's he's in the computer industry he's quite good at it but he nice. he shoots with me quite a lot and he loves it uh my young one is the one who's more interested he's coming into my business he just finished his high school and he's he's gone to university now to look learn more photography i need him to have that certificate in his end then he's gonna start also he already works with me is gonna come to the studio and take over nice. there. Nice. Do you? Um, are you? When it comes to weddings, how long is a typical Yerevan wedding? Photography. Very long. Long. Very long. Uh -huh. Very long. Uh, I like I said because we said our clients give us more time. They're giving us plenty of time now. We uh -huh. sometimes I leave home at six o'clock in the morning. So and, you don't. Uh, there's no. There's no cap in hours. Like you don't have an hour package or. You don't go no, no, hours. we don't work with hours. Uh, mm -hmm. The only extra charges we do is full full reception coverage and mm -hmm. early start. Our coverage is is a package. It's it's all we we don't work with the hour because we know every every bride is going to give us similar timing. So mm -hmm. and the more time I have, it's better for me because the more I produce, the more I sell. The only part I don't like, the only part I don't like at a wedding is the reception. I am yeah, really <laughs> bored. I am really bored out of reception. Some respect, some receptions also don't respect us. Don't give us, uh, uh, you know, uh, that vendor cost. meals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, toilet inside the toilet meals. Yeah, 
uh, and uh, I don't have any more passion for this. You know, if, uh -huh. if they say there's no food, I'll bring my own food, to put it on the table and dine and they can't say anything to me. Yeah. Some because, photographers, uh, some photographers, they have an assistant take over and the photographer just leaves after the first dance. <laughs> it is, yeah, it, I do that. I do that. I uh, most of my weddings we try to convince the bride and groom, and it's the reality. You need us only for the first two hours. Yeah. Once I cover everything, what else do you want me to do? Just take snapshots of people dancing? Yeah, yeah. When he will do a better job. When Yervan said two hours, Ryan, he means the first two hours of reception. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, not the first gotcha. two hours. <laughs> oh, the wedding. Oh, wow. The reception, yes, yes. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah yes. that's cool. So I, I usually, 80% of the time, we stay two hours and we're finished. Uh, we have assistant photographers who take over. But uh, most of the time when you have this high-end high, high end wedding yeah. and they say, yeah, Van, we want you there, I still have my assistants who, who are there, but I, my presence is very important because I made the mistake of leaving the reception early a few times in the, in the past. And uh, the rumors go that Yervan doesn't stay at the reception, he's arrogant and things. So I don't want that <laughs> to happen. So yeah, I, I, I stay there, show my face, make sure that I'm there and keep the families happy. Yeah, because they know if they're paying like, you know, the big bucks, some of these high end weddings. They'll make a and, big fuss about you not being there. And I understand because they're they're fully trusting you. They're they're wanting your service. And I, I understand. I hate it, but I will stay and my team does a great coverage. I don't hate the wedding. I hate the, hours. the, the moment, the, the hours. Reception hours. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Um, so you said that people when they book you, it's more because of the brand that you created, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. So a lot of photographers now, especially with the cameras that we have, we're changing from just being photographers to being photographers and learning video on the side as well. Now, I'm assuming since you built that brand, you didn't really have to transition into learning more video and trying to offer both. <laughs> or did That's you? a very good question. That's a very good question, because up to last year, up to last year, we had many video friends which we hired uh we we didn't hire we recommended so right. the, our clients go to them but but now funny enough lately we ha we're having customers who are saying we want to get a package video package and a photography package uh so this was a uh, year one reinventing himself and for two years i've been learning videography and wow. uh, we, my two boys also are, are learning. So we've started our video just, uh, it's our second or third video now. And we're, we're trying to, to build a, a year one style of the video also. Nice. So, that's a, so that's simply a because of, it's a business decision, but also I don't want to miss out on something, you know, uh, there, there's a saying that video is going to take over, photography is not as important. I don't believe that. I really don't believe that, but always have a defense behind me. So if my boys eventually will continue my business, uh, we, we provide the full service. At some point, you're going to leave it up to your sons or whoever's oh, going to take over yes. the brand. Yes. Do you I still enjoy it. So I still enjoy it. So I'm not going to leave it tomorrow, yeah, yeah. but eventually I have to think yeah. everyone is we have to leave it eventually the next step but you can continue the brand which you are do yeah. you see yourself one day saying okay i'll this is the brand and we do the business but i direct behind the scenes i'm you know that's the direction i'm taking that's why um i had a good team but because of COVID and changes uh, uh things changed the planning changed uh, but luckily, uh, my sons came up. They 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 decided. Uh, Robbie, the young one, decided. Yes, that I want to do what you're doing. He's obsessed with Leicas and everything. So that was my older son, Ricky. He has been helping me for ages, and he's a very excellent photographer. He's an excellent photographer. So because I have them, 
my son's girlfriend also is quite interested in uh, helping my son and thing. So I have a good team now, but this is a more solid team because it's a family. It's a family. So eventually what my idea is, I don't want, I've never wanted to shoot many weddings. We shoot maximum three weddings a day, maximum. More like two weddings because I don't want to have uh, photographers who, who are freelancers and we have problems and not to deliver the year round quality. So two weddings maximum a day and uh, then I have a solid team. What my plans are eventually, I will meet the photographer and the bridal party in the location and mm -hmm. do some shot there myself, my, my version, go to the next wedding, do my uh, other version. So there's a touch of year one in there and uh, then the team will continue with, with their stuff. So that's, that's, interesting. that's what, but also there's a lot in our industry. I want, I've started the YouTube channel. I want to develop that. Uh, for education and things like that. Uh, I want to bring a lot more into the industry. I'm, uh, I have so much ambition still. And I, yeah. I really enjoy shooting weddings still. Uh, because of COVID, I didn't shoot for six months now. And I was so nervous for my first wedding after the mm -hmm. COVID. I was nervous. I had to wake up, to go to the place, to do my first shot. Once I was there, I, I, it all came back. Do, do you, uh, I noticed your Instagram is huge. You have quite a bit of followers on your Instagram. Many like are photographers, days. many are photographers. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, but uh, my clientele is also quite good in following my Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, that's our main source of uh, customer uh, mm -hmm. that don't know me. So, but, but generally the word of mouth is the strongest. Do you still get that cold call Instagram message where, hey, I like your work? You know, what are your packages? Always, or, always oh, okay. yeah, yeah, always, oh, always. Nice. But I don't handle that part of the business. My wife, yeah. Annie, handles the, the com communication with the people because, I, I, because I'm so busy in production and everything, I just don't want to take that part also because I will forget things and make a mess out of it. That's amazing. Yeah, you have you have to you have to. It's a yeah. point you need help. You know, you can't do it all yourself. <laughs> Can you tell us one crazy, just one, one crazy wedding story? Just real quick, the nightmare or something. The crazy weddings happen early days in my career. Early <laughs> days in my career when uh, I was new, when uh, when Australia is a new country also. We had a lot of new migrants. So so this is a country that's small population and we're growing together. You see, USA has 350 million population. We have only 24 million all over Australia. So when I was here, I was 14 years old when I came here. And then after I, I was fully ready, I started shooting and I went to Italy to study and everything. So I was shooting cheap weddings, mm -hmm. uh, advertising uh, Herald Sun, which was an newspaper advertised for a few dollars and by advertising on that you get uh cheaper customers also you know the the bottom of the the ladder so uh, fun fun to do that but one one of them uh i went to the to the bright house she lived in the country area in victoria in other thing close to melbourne to the, the shots. Uh, she was Australian, nice country girl, very simple. And then I went to the groom's house, uh, did the shots. Uh, the, the groom was a migrant, uh, a migrant family. So uh, they were having a lot of drinks at the, at the groom's place, a lot of drinks. And then I went to the church. I went to the church uh, and no one's at the church. There's no one. I'm, I'm, am I at the right church? <laughs> Have I done a mistake? What's going on? So I, I panicked a little bit. Those days there was no GPS, nothing. It's just a book. So this is it. This is all where I'm going to be. And I waited. Then I saw some people coming. I said, okay, I'm in the right place. Then the bride arrived with her car. Uh, and I, uh, the groom is nowhere to be seen. Uh, I said, uh, <laughs> sweetheart, the groom is not here yet. Um, the groom is not here yet. Uh, what, are, what do you want to do? Oh, the, the driver said, we'll go around the block. 
one hour, two hour, the bride was going around and around, no groom showing up. I I went inside the, the church. Uh, Annie, my wife, was my fiance then. She was helping me. So we went there and uh, we talked to the, the priest came also late. He said, don't worry, he's coming. I said to the bride, okay, he's coming. What do you want to do? The bride said, I, um, um, I don't want to stay in the car. I'll go inside the church. So her, he, her and the family, very small family, walked in the church and she sat down and waiting for the groom instead of the groom waiting for the bride. People started to come, relatives of the groom. The groom had bigger family than the bride. So they all started to come. And eventually the groom came. He had a scotch of, bottle of scotch in his hand. He was half drunk, half drunk and walk, walked down the aisle with the, with the bottle and oh. said, okay, let's get married. <laughs> Let's get married. So the service was happening, uh, and I I can see the 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 groom pulling the priest forward a little bit towards him and saying, "I'm gonna kill you." To the priest, what? I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. I said, "Honey, we're in trouble. There's something going on." The the guests don't know what's what's happening. <laughs> so eventually, eventually, they got married, and the priest cut the service short. I know the short service was cut short. And uh, the groom realized that it was cut short. He said, have you finished? The priest said, yes, I'm finished. He picked up his ring and threw it at the priest. Wow. You cut my service in short. This is not fair. <laughs> this is not fair. Now, now the priest is running. The groom is running after the, the, the priest. The best man and the groomsman running after the groom. They're trying to hold. There's all this punch up blood everywhere, uh, blood everywhere. And, and I went, wow. you know, I had a very expensive Rolleiflex camera. So I, I went ducked under the table. So, <laughs> so I don't lose my camera. Eventually uh, the bride and groom left. The bride and groom left without any announcement. So the, the reception was next to the church next to the church and uh, the guests are waiting, they're eating, they're uh, waiting. And eventually the bride and groom come. The bride dress was half blood over the dress. So it was a nice wedding. I think it's one wow. of my favorite weddings because there was so much happening. Yeah. The unfortunately yeah, part was I was scared to take pictures because I was only, I wish it was today I would have taken all these action pictures. Imagine, man, the blood and the ring, and <laughs> that's there awesome. were so many of weddings like this, a big fights in a, in a reception, like Croatian wedding and Mas Mas uh, Croatian and Serbian wedding. They hate each other, but they were all Yugoslavia then. And I didn't know why these people hate each other. They used to bring out knives and fight. These were wow. uh, village people fighting each other and thing. But un unfortunately, none of the action has been photographed. That's my biggest regret. I should yeah, have that, a that camera and shoot, shoot all the action. Well, so I've, been doing a, it, I've been doing this for 35 millimeter. I can really, 35 years, I mean, I can really write a book about weddings. You know, sometimes I get wedding coordinators, 20 year old, trying to tell me what to do. I say, sweetheart, I, you years. come to, my, to me, I'll tell you what to do. Okay, reception or whatever. I have I have a, I have an experience from the start of the bride's house to the end of the reception. So you ask me question and don't tell me what to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get that all the time with the newer trendy people. Tips for beginner wedding photographers: what to look for, wh what advice you want to give them. You know, if somebody's starting out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, very important point also. You know, when I started, I worked for nothing. Uh, when I had assistant many years ago, some of the best photographers now in Melbourne have assisted me. Uh, and uh, when these guys used to assist me, they were so ambitious. You know, they didn't ask for money. It was not about money. It was about what they're going to learn from me, what they're going to learn. And, and today I find assistants are very hungry for how much you're going to pay. What am I going to get paid? First of all, as a new photographer, learn as much as you can from another photographer. And you should pay that other photographer, not the photographer paying you because 
learning is the best, especially learning from the real moments is the best education. So as a new photographer, think of money. I say this all the time to my sons. Money will come if you achieve what you want. Don't work to get the money. Don't work for the money. Work for being educated. That's so, that's so, so important, guys. Uh, learn as much as you can. Uh, yes, you have learned from university or wherever, but that education is not the same as a real job. Go out and learn more from the photographer because what you know is not good enough. You have to learn the active photographer, what he does and how he does. Once you do that, of course, then you can take the next stage. As far as promoting yourself, you know, if it's it was me and I've done this before, um, do few few free jobs. Don't start for money. Do free job. If you're not good enough or just offer your services and work your butt off. You know, many photographers I've seen uh, people warn me that this photographer is using your picture on their website. That photographer is only lying to their client, not me. You're not mm -hmm. showing my pictures. To, so don't do that. Be proud of what you're doing and take that stage and learn, learn, and then produce and then sell yourself. You're, you're big on albums. Graphic Studio, you still like use them? I, I love Graphic Studio. And, and what, what album does is create more sales for me because album is a, something in your hand. USB, uh, USB is something that's little, small, no value. And it, it disappears after a while, you know, a book is always accessible from grandparents, from children. You see the family I've seen in my family, they, they will start watching these pictures and it tells them a story. More than video, video you can watch one or twice, but albums you can always watch. You know, I lost my mother just recently and my sons were interested to see her, her family and think, you know, the, the pictures came alive. Pictures never die. Picture is a second of your life uh, that's been recorded and sitting there on a the table or in a box or wherever it is. And, and I can present my work better in an album than on a USB. The next 50 years of the generation will have no memories because all they're doing is digital. They're not printing. And that's see, so true. It's so true. I don't use too much my iPhone, but I know my wife does. And, and she can't find any more pictures. And I don't know how many times by changing the phone and think she'd lost so many pictures. Uh, and finding the pictures, okay, it's easier to find, but you don't, you don't need all that pictures in the album. You, know, you need the special pictures in the album. And wedding is the most important part of your life. And having an album, having a book is so, so important. Every one of my clients must have an album. We make small profit on the album. If, if I have to, I will give away the album so I can give the client an album. It's an experience. You know, it's not the USB. It's not the, they, they had their USB. You know how many times they call me still and say, yeah, but when am I going to get my album after yeah. having the USB? Yeah. So yeah. this is this is passion. Is it full resolution? Full resolution JPEGs. Full resolution JPEGs. Color corrected, not retouched. Because it will okay. be over 1,000 images. I'm not going to sit down and retouch. I just made a you. video. I just made a video on that subject. But Ryan has a YouTube channel, uh, Ryan Troy, and he's a business-oriented photographer, and he loves this topic. He has a show called Break This Down. Mm -hmm. And uh, this uh, subject that you're talking about with album sales and, and prints, I think, Ryan, you should take a special liking to this because what he's saying is... I would love to do a presentation for you, Ryan. Because it's so important in our business. Because uh, it's it's more tangible, something that they're taking home. There, it's not anymore two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars. It's it's a whole business, you know. And my clients don't tell me that I'm ripping them off. My clients are getting a lot of value. My clients are getting a book that's timeless. It's two hundred fifty years archival. So it's it's really very important in my opinion. As far as photography, wedding photography, would you say it's 50-50 skills and the way you present yourself? Yes, 
uh, I think everything is 100%. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're all separate. They're all different part of the business. You see, I can't sell myself. I'm terrible at selling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I have my team, my wife and her team who sell, who sell me. But also my product sells itself. Yeah. So it's easy for my wife to sell my right. product. Then the talent of me as a photographer. Then the talent of me as a post-production. You see, they're all different part of wedding photography. It's just not clicking only in my business. It's the yeah. whole. And now we've introduced the video also. Yeah. Ryan had a uh, friend, photographer friend, uh, just starting out in wedding photography. And they wanted to quit because they couldn't get clients. You know, I had a hard time getting clients. So you 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 put you pointed out a really good way of you know shooting for your friends, relatives free, yep. assisting. You know that made a lot of sense. You know, you need to to prove yourself first. You just can't go. Uh, my mom said I have a good talent with the camera, and I'm going to become a photographer. <laughs> it doesn't happen that way. You right. need you need to have the passion in you. You need to love what you're doing. You know, you're not doing it because you you lost your job and you have a camera and do the job. It's not not like that. And yeah. unfortunately, 80% of photographers now are dead. I have a camera and I'm a good good photographer. And and those are the ones who will never succeed in their business. Mm, right. That's interesting. Before we end this talk. Uh, there's just a few rapid fire questions I want to ask you. One or two word answers. Okay. Okay. But before we start that, uh, Ryan, do you have a, a final question for Mr. Come Yuri? on, Ryan, shoot it. I mean, I, I like what you just said, uh, how you ended it was great when you were talking about people that just could take good pictures or whatever. Like, that's not going to get it. You got to know other aspects in order to make it so all right so let's get started we'll we'll wrap this talk up with some rapid fire questions you ready one or two word answers all right so here we go the number one thing if you were to you know select one or two words about the wedding photography business i i suppose the bride is the number one (laughs) yeah and you got some amazing brides you know the the character yeah the character the the expressions that you bring out of them are just amazing One thing you hate about the wedding photography business? Reception. Okay. Uh, Favorite city to photograph or visit? Uh, Melbourne and Venice. Nice, nice. Because you have a lot of, you do a lot of destination weddings. I saw your, you know. I studied in Venice, so I'm very close to that. And I do a lot of workshops there. Nice, nice. D- oh, I know the answer to this, but let me shoot it anyway. DSLR or mirrorless? Mirrorless. <laughs> okay. Hundred flash, flash or natural light? There's no picture with no light. So if there's no light, flash, of course. <laughs> okay. And last oh, question. I can, I, can, I can clarify that also. I like continuous light also. So flash and continuous light. Uh, yeah, nice. And my last question. Uh, your favorite lens of all time any brand any any era uh most of the zeiss lenses 50 millimeter zeiss it's it's a beautiful beautiful lens that's your favorite uh focal length i take it uh yeah that's that's the that's a good focal length yes the zeiss lens is that you like that with your leica cameras with the Leica, I use it sometimes also with uh, with the video now. Uh, uh, putting it on the Canon camera, it's it just that that has the, it's it's soft, it's sharp, it's that beautiful sparkle. That I but mind you, these new RF lenses are very the Canon RF lenses are coming very close to their lenses. They have amazing lenses. Remember you were saying that the reason why you really didn't want the um, the 24 to 70 2.8 is because of the size or the weight. Wait, yeah. Have you tried the, I think Canon, the RF, they have a 20, is it a 24 to 70 2.0? 2.0, oh, I tried. It's a, it's a beautiful, it's, huge. it's a beautiful, beautiful lens, but it's huge. It's, it's you see, the reason I like the mirrorless is because of the weight. 
And right. that's a huge camera, you know? Mind you, uh, mind you, talking about that, I hated the 7200 lens. I never used it with DSLR because it was heavy, bulky. It doesn't fit on me. I, I can't take it with me. But the new one, it's the same size as a, as a 2470. Now that's a, that's a lens that I'm carrying with me quite a lot. Because Wait, which one is that again? 20, uh, 70 to 100. Oh, 70 to 200. Okay. So, so you know, that, that's improved. Uh, and I like to using, I like using that also now. Gotcha. Nice, nice. Well, Yervant, thank you for joining us on Vahography thank you, Talk. It Sorry, was my I pleasure. can see the tree behind you. So Merry yeah. Christmas, guys. Yeah, Merry <laughs> Christmas. Happy New Year. It was a pleasure. Uh, My you little know. tree right there. Oh, there it is. I saw it. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't have yes. any trees. Now I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, Yervan, thank you for your time. It was a pleasure. And uh, I'm looking forward to this in the future. Um, yeah, it was a learning so, experience for sure. Anything you need, just let me know, guys. Uh, I'll be happy to cooperate. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vahagen here from Vahography. Vahography Talk number 14 in the books i want to thank everybody and we'll see you soon and remember rock and roll see you guys <laughs>